Welcome, everyone. The Honorable Hillary Rodham Clinton, U.S. Secretary of State, Senator the Honorable Chris Evans, Federal Minister for Tertiary Education, Skills, Science and Research, the Honorable Colin Barnett, Premier of Western Australia, Dr. Michael Cheney, Chancellor, the University of Western Australia, Ambassador Jeffrey Bleich, Ambassador Kim Beasley, Consul General Alicia Woodward, and Vice Chancellor Professor Paul Johnson. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, we acknowledge this campus is situated on Noongar land and that Noongar people remain the spiritual and cultural custodians of their land and continue to practice their values, languages, beliefs, and knowledge. As CEO of the United States Studies Center at the University of Sydney, and on behalf of the chairman of the American Australian Association, Malcolm Banks, and its deputy chairman, the Honorable John Olson, I welcome you to the launch of the Perth US Asia Center. With this launch, we celebrate the continuing expansion and deepening of understanding about the United States in Australia. Founded six years ago, the United States Studies Center has had this goal as its principal mission, tapping into the deep interest in Australia about the United States and about US-Australia relations. We do this through teaching, through research, and through public outreach. And tonight, we are pleased to build upon this success by partnering with the University of Western Australia and the American Australian Association to launch the Perth U.S. Asia Center with the strong support of the Australian and Western Australian governments. As the United States and Australia look to further strengthen their long-standing partnership, the U.S. Studies Center and the Perth U.S. Asia Center are ready to contribute to a better understanding of the United States and U.S.-Australia relations in Asia. Thank you for coming this evening. It is my pleasure to invite to the stage Dr. Michael Cheney, Chancellor of the University of Western Australia. Thank you, Professor Gill. I'm not going to run through uh, those acknowledgements uh, in the interest of time, but can I say how delighted we are that uh, you've all been able to join us tonight and how honoured we are uh, that uh, Secretary Clinton uh, has come tonight to our university. This university, along with the city of Perth and the state of Western Australia, occupies a very strategically important geographic position on the western rim of the Australian continent and on the eastern rim of the Indian Ocean. This location places us in the same time zone, give or take uh, two hours, as around 60% of the world's population. And of course the nations in that time zone offer the promise of the greatest economic growth in the 21st century. But there's also, of course, a very strong relationship between Western Australia and the United States. It's a relationship forged through bodies such as the American Australian Association, the United States Studies Centre, the American Chamber of Commerce and so on, through education and research links between universities like ours and institutions in the US, and through significant investment in Western Australia by US businesses, particularly, as we all know, in the mineral and energy resources businesses and in technology and in training. The University of Western Australia has some very special personal links as well. One of our favourite sons who's with us here tonight, uh, distinguished alumnus, the Honourable Kim Beasley, is the current Australian ambassador to the United States. Australia's defence minister, the Honourable Stephen Smith, and Minister Chris Evans, who joins us tonight also, are also alumni of this university, as no doubt many others are in this room. And we're very proud of them and their achievements. 
The Perth US Asia Centre is a $10 million initiative between the US Studies Centre, the American Australian Association and the University of Western Australia with major funding from the Australian and Western Australian governments and US corporations. The centre, which will be based here at this university, will leverage the world-class capabilities of the US Studies Centre at the University of Sydney and will draw strength from the unique location and resources of Western Australia to understand and analyse the uh, relationships between the United States and Asia and Australia. It'll be interdisciplinary, giving equal weight to teaching and research, to policy analysis and community education. It will provide the go-to resource in Western Australia on US politics, foreign policy, security, business, history, culture and society, as well as uh, being a leading global centre of excellence in energy and sustainability. We're absolutely delighted to have the opportunity to host this centre here and we look forward very much to developing this very important strategic relationship. It's now my pleasure to introduce the West Australian Premier, the Honourable Colin Barnett, to address us. Mr Premier. Good evening uh, to Madam Secretary of State, uh, Chancellor, Minister Evans, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, the West Australian Government is uh, also very pleased to be supporting this Perth USA Asia Centre. And it has uh, great logic and great merit. Uh, my father was, uh, like so many that of his era, a World War II veteran. Uh, he was a rat of Tobruk, and uh, then he and his uh, mates returned from North Africa to take part in uh, the Pacific Islands battle. Uh, I was born not long after the war. Uh, my father would say to me uh, regularly, it was the Americans who saved us through the Battle of the Coral Sea. Uh, and following the Second World War, the ANZUS Treaty of 1951, uh, Australia's most important treaty, uh, has set in place both our defence and our foreign alliance, uh, and that is the centre of Australian foreign and defence policy, and that is where it should be. I admit to having a very confused childhood. Um, growing up as a little boy in the 1950s and then a teenager in the 60s, uh, that was the time of the Cold War, of course, and also the space race. Uh, one of my earliest memories was seeing Sputnik go overhead. I, in fact, insisted on being called Sputnik and would answer to no other term. Um, uh, then, of course, a little bit later, uh, a little bit later, uh, television finally came to Perth and to Western Australia. And, of course, with that came all of the American shows, Mickey Mouse Club, Leave it to Beaver, 77 Sunset Strip. Uh, and then I had a transformation. I wanted to be an American. So I had completely changed... And, of course, during those years, there was a, a close association. Um, the communications base uh, established uh, by the United States uh, near Exmouth. And, of course, uh, the Carnarvon tracking station uh, played a, a vital role in the Apollo uh, missions through that period. And, Madam Secretary, you were even gracious enough, your country, to dump Skylab on us uh, when it came crashing to Earth over the West Australian desert in 1979. Uh, and then I guess the next big uh, link in the uh, West Australian-American uh, relationship was uh, our greatest sporting triumph when uh, a group from Perth uh, won the America's Cup after 132 years of being uh, held by the United States, obviously. Um, we thought that was pretty good. And then the Sale America Syndicate under Dennis Connors came over four years, and just, four years later and just quietly took it back. And uh, that was the end of that bit of fame. Um, but I, I think particularly um, there's a sense uh, from the 80s and, and now that, uh, in a sense, in this state, the Americans are back, particularly with uh, major investments uh, taking place in the resources industry and particularly in the petroleum industry. And uh, it is a fact that uh, American investment in Australia, and including particularly in Western Australia, is the highest of any uh, foreign nation. And, uh, again, uh, that investment plays a critical role in our economic development. It's also the case that, uh, I think, from a West Australian perspective, uh, that it has been Western Australia that has the closest and most developed relationship uh, with the countries of Asia. 
than any other part of Australia. I would argue uh, relations here are probably up to 20 years ahead of the rest of the country. Uh, it started in the 1960s with the post-war reconstruction of Japan and their need for iron ore. That saw the development of the Pilbara iron ore projects in uh, the north of the state uh, and the offshore Northwest Shelf gas project. And of course now the, uh, the major change is um, the extraordinary economic growth of China and their extraordinary demand for natural resources. Uh, it's an interesting fact that uh, the trade between Australia and China is very much dominated from this state. 70% uh, of Australia's exports to China come from the state of Western Australia. 80% of Chinese state-owned enterprise investment in Australia finds its way into Western Australia. And perhaps uh, the quirkiest statistic at all, uh, Madam Secretary, that I can say to you is that um, in the last year, exports to China from Western Australia were $47 billion from a population of 2.4 million in this state. That $47 billion is just over half of all of the USA's merchandise export to China. So we have a very close economic relationship uh, throughout Asia and a, a growing social and cultural relationship. So for all of those reasons, our interesting, exciting uh, and strong relationship with the United States, our historic and growing relations throughout Asia, I think uh, underpins this uh, new formation of this uh, Perth uh, USA Asia Centre. So the state government obviously is very pleased to support this. Uh, I congratulate the University of Western Australia on hosting this centre and I look forward to it undertaking many uh, important uh, research, exchange and scholarship programs in the years to come. Uh, may I now ask uh, Minister Evans to uh, make some comments on behalf of the Australian Government. Thank you very much. Uh, I always think of you as Sputnik now, Premier Barnett, I'm sorry. Um, um, uh, Madam Secretary, uh, very great pleasure to have you uh, with us this evening. Um, Chancellor Cheney, uh, Ambassadors, uh, Vice-Chancellor, uh, distinguished guests. Uh, it's very, uh, very uh, pleasurable to be here tonight at the launch of what is a, going to be, I think, a very important part of the university and also a part of the uh, US-Australia relationship. Um, I think uh, this centre will be in addition to the centre in Sydney, but it reflects, I think, a, a development which is the growth of uh, Western Australia, the shift of population and economic activity west, much as like occurred in the United States uh, of America. Uh, but, uh, but also, uh, as Premier Barnett rightly identified, the focus on, a the focus on Asia Western Australia and increasingly Australia's understanding of the importance of Asia to our future. And I think uh, it's something that the US and Australia uh, share, the understanding of the importance of the emergence of the Asia Pacific and the populations and the, the growing middle class and the whole economic development uh, that's occurring and the opportunities uh, uh, that uh, are there for us, but also challenges. Um, I think uh, the centre will reinforce uh, what are very strong Australia-United States uh, bonds. They'll reinforce uh, the importance of WA in that, uh, in that engagement with the United States. And it'll also, as I say, reinforce our understanding of how important our engagement in the Asia-Pacific is and is going to be in coming years. Uh, Madam Secretary, you'll be aware that we've recently released uh, our Asian-Pacific white paper, which seeks to... Uh, to focus our attention on, uh, on the developments in Asia, but also uh, reminds us of the importance of the US uh, relationship to Australia, that it's at the bedrock of a whole range of our uh, important interests, be they strategic and defence, industry, trade, uh, research or cultural. And I think, uh, I think uh, it's uh, worth reflecting on the depth and breadth of those relationships but because of, I think, the focus on the growth of Asia, particularly in China and Western Australia, uh, and Australia more broadly, there's always this focus on Asia. We tend to forget the ongoing contribution that uh, the United States of America makes and our, the depth of our relationship. And uh, this morning, the Prime Minister uh, uh, opened uh, the GE Skills Centre in uh, Jandicott. 
and uh, um, it's a reflection of GE's investment in Western Australia as they support, in particular, the development of the oil and gas industry, but also, uh, you know, as you know, they've got a very wide range of, uh, of uh, interests. Um, but they are beginning to train at this centre uh, young Australians who are going to be involved in the oil and gas industry. And they're working for Chevron, they're working for ConocoPhillips, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the young people who are there today. Uh, a reflection of the huge United States engagement with the development of the oil and gas sector and the mining sector in Western Australia and a reflection of the investment that the, pr that the Premier uh, spoke of, the very, very large investment of uh, United States companies in Australia and their centrality to the economic development here. And of course we're very pleased as a federal government to be partnering with GE in the upskilling of our workforce and the creation of high skill, high wage, long term jobs as they support uh, the oil and gas investments that will run for 40 or 50 years. So uh, it's very pleasing today to have both sides of that devel development. The, uh, the, uh, the launch tonight of the, uh, of the study centre focused at uni the University of Western Australia and the launch also of the skills centre involving United States firms active in, a, in creating jobs and opportunities in Western Australia. I think uh, this centre is going to be very, uh, very important uh, because I think it does round out the picture of what's been occurring at Sydney University. Uh, sometimes I worry I sound a bit like the Premier of Western Australia when I get a bit parochial, uh, but it is important that Australia recognises the, uh, the growing importance of Western Australia in, in that relationship and that investment. Um, the other thing I'd like to say uh, is that I think uh, locating the centre at a university is really important because while our strategic and economic interests are important, in the end the, the links that really bind are the personal links, the links that come from our young people engaging with each other, travelling to each other's countries, developing understanding, and, uh, and friendships and there's a lot of that occurs uh, with Australian students uh, travelling to the United States, a lot of United States uh, citizens travelling to Australia and I think the universities are a great way uh, of uh, enhancing and growing those uh, linkages which are so important to those uh, sorts of cultural and understandings that the Premier reflected on. Uh, I reflected on it myself uh, over the last few days as we uh, debated and followed the United States presidential election. And when my son, who's 16, started explaining to me the electoral college system in the United States, uh, I began to think that the cultural influence on the United States was still very strong. I'm not sure he could explain the Senate voting system uh, to me in Australia, but he had a good grasp of the United States uh, electoral college and the presidential elections, which is another, uh, another uh, example, I think, of uh, how strong and deep those relationships are. Anyway, it's a great pleasure uh, for the Commonwealth Government to be involved in the launch of the, of the centre. I'm very pleased the West Australian Government and the University of Western Australia have come together and uh, I'm sure it's going to be uh, uh, an important contributor to the relationship and, uh, and uh, mutual understanding. But now it's my great pleasure to, uh, to welcome and introduce the Secretary of, State, uh, Secretary of State for the United States of America, Hillary Rodham Clinton. Thank you very much, Minister Evans, um, and thanks also uh, to Premier Barnett, here after known as Premier Sputnik, uh, <laughs> Chancellor Cheney, uh, our excellent uh, two ambassadors, uh, your alumnus, uh, Kim Beasley, who serves you so well in Washington, and our ambassador, Jeff Bleich, who I think knows more Australians than uh, most Australians do at this point. Uh, and Dr. Gill, uh, thank you for your pioneering work at the U.S. Studies Center. Um, this is a wonderful opportunity for me to be here at the University of Western Australia, uh, a campus that looks uh, remarkably like Stanford University, where my daughter uh, attended, and to be in this uh, fabulous art gallery that I will not get a chance perhaps to see, but which uh, certainly piques my interest. 
and to be part of um, helping to launch this center that will uh, shape strategic thinking in this dynamic region. Uh, this is my first visit to Perth, but I have heard much about it, not least of all from your ambassador and Stephen Smith, uh, your defense minister. And one story in particular stands out, uh, because from the time I was a little girl premier, I was fascinated by space exploration, and you and I are of a vintage where we can actually remember Sputnik uh, going over. And I even wrote to NASA, our uh, space administration, when I was about 13 and asked uh, what I needed to do to become an astronaut myself. I unfortunately received an answer that said they weren't taking women. Uh, thankfully, that has changed uh, in the years since. Uh, but I was riveted uh, by the space program, and certainly when my friend and a great American, John Glenn, became uh, the first American to orbit the Earth in 1962, it was so exciting to know that the people of Perth were literally with him and cheering him on, because as you know so well, when John's capsule passed overhead, Every light in this city uh, came on to signal uh, support for his mission. And I will tell you that he never forgot uh, the gesture of friendship from this city of light. Uh, so for me to be here is uh, a, uh, a dream come true. And I suppose if one were to go up into space today and look down at Perth, you would see a city that is sitting on a very strategic part of our planet. Australia's gateway to the vibrant trade and energy routes that connect the Indian Ocean to the Pacific, the oil, the natural gas, the iron ore produced here that flows through those uh, trade routes to the entire world. It is no surprise that foreign investment is soaring, including more than $100 billion from the United States because increasingly these waters are at the heart of the global economy and a key focus of America's expanding engagement in the region, what we sometimes call our pivot to Asia. We never actually left Asia. Uh, we've always been here and been a presence here. We consider ourselves uh, a Pacific power. But in the 21st century, it's important that we make absolutely clear we are here to stay. Uh, and how we think about the Asia-Pacific or the Indo-Pacific region is going to be critical to our future as well as yours. We've made it a strategic priority to support India's Look East policy and to encourage Delhi to play a larger role in Asian institutions and affairs. Uh, and it's exciting to see the developments um, as the world's largest democracy and a dynamic emerging economy begins to contribute uh, more broadly to the region. It's also important to see the burgeoning relationship between uh, Australia and India and we support the Look West policy here in Australia and certainly applaud the Australian government's uh, strategic white paper on uh, Asian policy. We would welcome joint Australia-Indian naval vessel exercises in the future and we're eager to work together in the Indian Ocean Rim Association for regional cooperation, which Australia will chair in 2013 and which the United States has now joined as a dialogue partner. I'm here for what are called the Osman meetings. Uh, these are annual meetings that uh, our Secretary of State and Secretary of Defense hold with our counterparts, Stephen Smith and Bob Carr. Uh, we will be reviewing implementation of the military agreements that Prime Minister Gillard and President Obama reached last November, including uh, the rotational deployment of U.S. Marines in Darwin and improving interoperability between our two navies. These steps will help our country safeguard commerce and respond to natural disasters in the sea lanes connecting the Indian and Pacific Oceans. So here at the University of Western Australia, you are at the leading edge of a crucial strategic shift 
linking two great oceans and strengthening an historic alliance. And I hope that the work that you do here will help to light the way just as Perth did for John Glenn 50 years ago. Because when one stops to ponder it, um, our commercial, cultural, and personal relationships are really at the core of how we see and hope the world will develop in this century. Uh, commercially, it's already been said, we have deep and growing ties. Culturally, uh, we also share the values that uh, democracies um, share. We share the values of freedom and human rights, of the dignity of every person. And personally, the connections between us only grow stronger. So opening this uh, center, and so well named the Perth US Asia Center, will give an additional impetus to exploring how we can broaden and deepen our commercial, cultural, and personal relationships. Uh, it shouldn't be any surprise that the United States is just as interested in Australia as you seem to be interested in us. Uh, we're constantly uh, following uh, your sports. You seem to have a flood of entertainers who take the American market by storm. Uh, the kinds of uh, connections that we have between us are ones that we highly value. Now, of course, we're living in a region that is changing so quickly. And there are other countries whose interests and profiles are equally uh, important for each of us. Uh, we look for ways to support the peaceful rise of China, uh, to support China becoming a responsible stakeholder in the international community, and hope to see gradual but consistent opening up of a Chinese society and political system that will more closely give the Chinese people the opportunities that we in the United States and Australia are lucky to take for granted. We have great relationships with our other friends and allies from Japan and South Korea, Thailand and the Philippines. Of course, we both enjoy close and growing relations with Indonesia. So as we think about how this region will change, it's important that Australia and the United States work together, look to see how we can contribute to the kind of region and world we hope to see for both of us to give our young people the opportunities that they so richly deserve. So I thank you for your steadfast commitment to the US-Australia partnership. It is a partnership that is of itself of importance to each of us, but it's also a partnership that must remain at the core of the kind of engagement we have in the Asia Pacific, Indo-Pacific regions for now and for the future. Thank you all. Thank you very much, Madam Secretary, for those remarks. Let me make one housekeeping uh, point. Uh, we'll ask all of our gathered guests here to please allow uh, the Secretary and our other uh, principal guests to depart the building uh, prior to everyone else. They're on to other, other schedules and other itineraries. Now, what I would like to ask, please, is for the Secretary and uh, the uh, Minister, the Premier, and the Chancellor, please, to join us here next to the plaque for the unveiling and the official launch of our center.